In a previous video, we used simple linear regression to evaluate batting performance at the level of teams. So we had a response variable, runs, and we tested various metrics like OBP and OPS and batting average as the predictor variables. Regressions can be extended to have more than one predictor variable. So that particular technique is called multiple regression, and to introduce it, we'll use one of the built-in data frames in R, the MTCARS data frame. So we see we have uh, a number of numerical columns, and let's uh, set up a model, we'll call it model 1. And we just call the LM function. And what we're going to try to do in this case is to predict miles per gallon. So miles per gallon is our response variable. Then we give our tilde. And then we're going to use several of these other columns to try to use as predictors. So we're going to look at the amount of cubic inch displacement. And then just use a plus sign. And we'll look at horsepower. And we'll look at the weight of the car. Then we have to tell the data frame we're using. So we'll run this line and we get our model and we can take a look at the model. So we see that for each of those predictor variables we have a separate line here in our summary and we can see that horsepower has a significant uh, effect on predicting miles per gallon, as does weight. But displacement does not. See that p-value is pretty close to 1. Interestingly, the slopes of horsepower and weight uh, differ significantly. It's about a hundredfold difference. So what this analysis tells us is that although both horsepower and weight have explanatory power, weight is far more important in explaining miles per gallon than horsepower. And if we look at our overall uh, regression, we can see with the adjusted R squared that we can explain about 81% of the variation in miles per gallon if we know um, horsepower and weight. Seeing that displacement is not useful for us, we might want to just run the model again. And this time I'm just going to take out displacement. So look at the summary uh, once more, and now we can see that horsepower is actually uh, e more, even more significant. The P is less than 0.01, and weight uh, continues to be highly significant, P less than 0.01. And our adjusted R squared has increased just a bit. So that's uh, a, a quick overview of how one might go about using um, multiple regression. And we can apply that to baseball. What I'm going to do now is just to paste in some code, and we're going to set up a new, a new data frame called B2000 based on the team's data frame from Sean Lehman's package. What we will do is to filter out all of the years from 2000 on, so we've got more modern uh, records of baseball here, and what I've done is to create a few new variables uh, one is the number of singles, and I simply get that by taking the total number of hits and subtracting the extra base hits, like so. And then we, we need uh, to calculate the on-base percentage, so there's the formula for that. And we need to calculate slugging, and there's the formula for that. I, in a little bit, we're going to be using outs, uh, so I needed to create that. And finally, we need to calculate uh, OPS. It's just the sum of OBP and slugging. So I'll run all of this. And now in the global environment window, I can see I have my, my new data frame with 53 variables, including the five that I just created. So let's take a look at uh, an analysis that we did last week. We were trying to ask how well OPS can explain the variation in runs. So we'll set up a second model. We'll call it model 2. And we call the LM function. And we're trying to predict runs. And we're 
I'm going to use OPS to do that. So we'll take a look at the summary of Model 2. And we can see that OPS is highly significant, and it's a pretty good predictor. It explains uh, about 91.5% of the variation in runs. But when you look at the formula that we used for OPS, you can see that we gave equal weight to slugging and OBP. But we can use multiple regression to see if, in fact, they are equal in effect. So this time we'll create a multiple regression. We'll call it Model 3, and it's going to be created by using runs as the response variable, and we're going to predict based on OBP plus slugging. Again, I need to specify the data frame. So I've got Model 3. We'll take a look at the summary of Model 3. And what we can see here is that the slopes of OBP and slugging are different. This higher value for OBP tells us that on base percentage has more explanatory power than slugging. And let's just do a quick uh, division here. So if we take 2743 and divide that by 1708, then we get a value of, of 1.6. So let's go back and modify our formula for OPS. So we'll call it OPS modified and it's going to be equal to 1.6 times on base percentage plus slugging. So we're giving more weight to on base percentage. So we'll run all of this again to create our new variable. So we'll go and create a new model. We'll call it Model 4. We're going to again try to predict runs. This time we're going to use OPS modified as our new predictor variable. And so now we can take a look at, at Model 4, a summary of that. And we can see that our, our multiple R squared is now at 92%. Um, and when we had simple OPS, our R squared was 0.91. So a marginal improvement, but uh, typically uh, weighting your on base a little higher than, than slugging is going to give you a better fit if you're using OPS to try to predict runs. What we're going to do now is to use multiple regression to determine the relative value of various kinds of hits as well as the value of walks and hit by pitch and stolen bases. It's a technique that's called linear weights. So we're going to start by making a new model. We call our LM function again and we have singles and doubles, triples, home runs, walks, hit by pitch, strikeouts, outs, caught stealing, stolen base. So again, we have to specify the data frame. Now we'll run this regression and we have model 5 so we can take a look at the summary model 5. And what we see is a 
list of all of the different predictor variables and a measure of their statistical significance or lack of same. And we can see that there are only two, uh, strikeouts and caught stealing, that don't have explanatory power in this particular an analysis. But all of the others do. And by looking at the slope, what we can do is to realize what the value of a single is, or a double, or a triple. So a single is worth about half a run. A double is not worth twice a single, but rather worth about 0.74 runs. A triple is usually going to lead to a run, so the average triple is going to be worth uh, about 1.2 runs. And a home run, of course, is going to be worth at least one run. So sometimes solo homers are hit, but more likely there's at least one man on base. And so the typical home run is going to produce 1.4 runs. Walks are not valued as highly as singles. So a walk is going to get you to first base just as a single would. But, of course, with a single, you have the chance to advance runners uh, more than one base. And... Uh, if you have a man on second, of course, and you walk, then that, that man on second does not advance, but obviously would on a single. Hit by pitches are valued a little more highly, and that is in large part because hit by pitches tend to occur more often when men are on base, that walks tend to occur a little more often when uh, the bases are empty, as pitchers try to pitch around uh, particular batters. Um, the strikeouts we're going to ignore uh, because they're not significant in the analysis. Um, and each out that you make diminishes the number of runs that you expect to score by a tenth. And finally, stolen bases are worth about uh, 0.16 of a run, so about half the value of a walk or uh, a third of the value of, it, of, a, uh, of a single. So a very powerful way of looking at the value of of individual events on the baseball diamond by using linear weights. You can see that we can explain 93% of the variation in runs by knowing these various uh, predictor variables here. We could go through and take out the, the two predictor variables that aren't useful for us, namely caught stealing and strikeouts. We'll rerun the model here. And in fact, our, um, our R square value goes up about uh, one hundredth of a, of a point. So that's a, a little bit of an improvement. But this is the, the method that has been uh, termed uh, linear weights. And it is uh, a very useful way to use multiple regression to, to analyze baseball.